Hey YouTube, it's Craig here and I'm back with a new video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about the Waterman Stanhope 35th anniversary fountain pen. One of the rarest pens in my collection. Before we get into this pen, I wanna talk about some of the new additions that I've added to my collection just over the last week. This isn't even all of them. I have so many pens now in this collection. I just wanted to share some of the pieces that I got. Today, I actually went to my PO box and I picked up this, which is a Waterman's 58. It's got a giant number eight size nib on it. Still not as big as the 20. It's the largest lever filling pen that Waterman's ever made with very nice. Can't wait to try this one out. Then I got this off of eBay. This is a 0552. So it is a gold filled lever filling pen with a number two size nib. This is the Gothic pattern. It has a really nice engraving, 1889 to 1929 UNCU, which I'm not sure which university that is, or if that is a university, but I think it is. Along with that 58, I picked up this today, which is a 0552 and a half LEC, lower end covered. So instead of having a little hard rubber down here, it is completely covered down here. And this is just the match to this pen. This one has a nice earlier New York nib on it. I had a Gothic LEC before, but it was Sterling and then I sold it. So now I have another one back, but the gold filled, I gotta find another st sterling one. One that preferably doesn't have a broken lever. I also got this guy, which is an earlier one. So instead of it being a 452 and a half, it is a 412 and a half VPSF. A nice nib on it. I just need to clean it up and put a new ink sack in it. This one is not monogrammed at all. I also got this, which is a 552 and a half V. This one also needs to be, have a new ink sack put in. This is a hand engraved vine sort of pattern. And this is 14 karat gold overlay, not gold filled overlay. Although I did notice if you look inside the cap, there's some damage inside the cap, but that's the inside of the cap. The outside still looks really nice. Now I like the box that it came with. I just need to find a pencil to match it. And lastly, this is from David Nishimura, 442 and a half V little baby safety with the telescoping cap. That way you could have this hooked onto a chain. I hate how blown out that gets. This is just a really smooth operating safety. Really, really nice piece. MWD engraved on there. And this one also has the earlier sort of text on there. So this is, I wanna say this is probably from 1917, 1918. Those are some of the new pieces I've gotten. They're not, that's not all of the new pieces I've gotten, but nice little addition. But this video is all about the Stanhope. This is from the 35th anniversary of Waterman. This is from around 1918, 1919, and it has a little Stanhope viewer. Stanhopes are miniature microphotographic lenses incorporated into novelty collectibles, produced between the mid 19th century and from there on. The Stanhope lens itself was actually named after Charles, the third Earl of Stanhope, who was born in 1753 and died in 1816. So long before this was even made and it had a different name, you know, it was a microphotographic lens, but it just kind of stuck. And from there on out, it was called the Stanhope. And if you get your eye really, really close to that, you can see the Waterman building, the Penn Corner from 191 Broadway from 1918, 1919. And there were two versions of this pen. There was this one with the nickel trim and no bands. And there was a version with two gold filled bands and a gold filled clip as well. Waterman, past and present for six decades from Max Davis and Gary Lair. And there you have the two versions of the pen. There's the Woolworth one, which was a lever filling pen, as well as a pencil. The story goes that Frank D. Waterman would give these out to his friends, but I also think it was just something you could purchase at a Waterman store as a novelty purchase. And they're still extremely rare, extremely pricey. Uh, this is not a cheap pen at all. It is a cone cap eyedropper, has a number three size nib on it. Let's see the patent dates on there. You just unscrew the section, fill that up, pop it back together, and you're ready to write. Again, there's that 35th anniversary and print and then number 13. This pen was well loved, well used. The chasing is still there, the imprints are still there, but it is pretty worn still. 
that I purchased this from David Nishimura, vintagepens.com. You'll see a lot of versions of this pen out there where it's mismatched. It has the gold bands on the pen and it has the nickel cap. The nickel cap is more common, but to find a complete version of this pen is still pretty rare. If you end up purchasing a pen that has the gold bands and the nickel cap, it's still a Stanhope. It's just two different pens that were put together. And with that, I'm gonna do a dip test and a writing sample. For this writing sample, I'm gonna use Waterman Paris Tender Purple. got a really nice flex to it this number three size nib I mean you can see how fine it goes to how broad it goes it gets it's they legitimately don't make these pens like they used to the reason why these vintage pens write so well and why they flex so well and they can just bend right back is these nibs were forged compared to modern nibs that are rolled out so you flex on these pens, you can see those tines spread and they just snap right back, no problem. And I know I'm getting railroading right there, but you can just see how well that flexes. Modern pens don't do that. They're not tempered like these ones were. You can just get such better line variation out of them and you know, you're know you not worried about breaking them. There's almost no difference between a gold nib and a steel nib of today. It's the all in the tipping material. Unless they're you know falcon nibs, they're not gonna flex anywhere near what these can do. I love this pen. I love this pen so much. I think this nib is awesome. The number three nib is pretty uncommon. I wouldn't say it's rare, but it's uncommon. And having a number 13 eyedropper is pretty uncommon. You can still find them, but they just didn't make very much. They, I don't think they ever really made a, a Waterman's 53 a lever filling number three nib. Maybe there's one out there, but they're just very uncommon. They really stuck to the twos, the fours the fives, the six, and I guess the eights, they, they didn't, you know, and of course I have a number 20 with the giant 10 size nib, but the three is just such a uncommon size, but this nib writes great. This pen writes awesome. It's got a cool little gimmick to it. There you go. You can see part of the building in there. Such a weird, interesting pen. I did make the mistake the day it came in the mail. I inked it up and I took it to work the very next day. And I was walking around and I was showing it to people at Disneyland and I handed it to a person I didn't really know very well and she straight up dropped this on the pavement. Luckily there was no damage done. I couldn't find any scratches, anything like that, but I'm an idiot. I shouldn't be taking really expensive, crazy rare fountain pens with me to work and handing them to random people. Uh, so lesson learned. I'm not gonna do that anymore. I have still taken kind of rare Waterman pens to work, but I'm not going to randomly hand it to people and just expect them to not drop it. I, I said, you know, be very careful with it. It's, it's expensive, it's rare. And she was like, whoops, and just dropped it on the ground. So I'm stupid for handing it to them in the first place. So it is what it is, but I want more people to get excited about antique pens. And I wanna share my Waterman collection with all of you. So be sure as well to check out 173 Broadway. It is going to be my virtual museum. Someday I hope to make it an actual working museum where you could walk in almost like a retail store and be able to try out any 
of my fountain pens. Maybe you could even build your own antique fountain pen out of parts. I don't know. We'll see where I can go with it, but I don't mean to ramble. I've been trying to make videos for you guys for a little bit. Just been going through a lot. I'm happy that I'm back at it. Let me know you guys if you have any questions about this pen or any of the pens. And I'm really excited for the future. And that's the video. Thanks so much for checking out, you guys. If you have any questions, go and leave a comment down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more content like this. And check out my Instagram, at Craig Reconova, as well as my collection, Instagram, 173 Broadway. And I'll see you all in the next video. All right. Peace.